awake to remind me you were happy to help And then you say this is the story I've waited to tell Good morning everybody! Today is September 7th, 2023. I am officially recording new music. I have not been this excited for a music project in such a long time. I genuinely love everything that I've been writing and it's been this beautifully healing and cathartic experience but I know every artist says that um <laughs> but like I've done so much work on myself over the last few years um especially since I did I Heard You Hate My Voice in 2021. I've been writing off and on over the last couple of years but I really focused on like YouTube and TikTok and you know growing my audience and making content that was fun and um, challenging myself, doing a lot of analysis work, which takes a lot of brain power. <laughs> so it's been a while. I've also gone through a lot of major life events, like coming in and out of the pandemic. My dad died of cancer. My mom fought cancer and beat it. My dog died. Uh, my music, business, my YouTube exploded, my TikTok uh, account blew up, and I just, I have all these beautiful, wonderful, amazing, fantastic fans and followers now that for some reason give a rat's ass as to what I say <laughs> in some sort of capacity. And, you know, I've been at this for a very, very long time, and to watch that finally, um, take shape. It's just really beautiful and I am genuinely so happy in my life and I, I don't think I've been this happy before. When you realize what you're actually good at and you lean into it, you start freeing yourself of these sort of mental cages. I think I really needed to take a long break to figure out what my sound now would be. You know, I know that sounds really probably cringy and very, every artist says that, but really, you know, I, I needed to not walk away, but take some time away, which is not something I liked doing because music is my life. And I think people got very confused. It's like, you keep calling yourself a musician, but the last song you released was in 2021 and it got like 12,000 streams, which is great and amazing and fantastic. And I'm very grateful for every single one of them. But I know people look at my music, they, they probably look at the size of my following now and think, are you sure you still wanna do music? Yeah, started this whole thing, writing music in my bedroom. And um, we're, my bedroom is right there. So we're basically doing the same thing now. <coughs> and I'm just so unbelievably happy with the music I'm creating. I'm writing music and lyrics at the same time, which is very weird for me. I'm really paying close attention to metaphors and trying to rhyme like a whole lyric rather than like focusing on the end word or end phrase. And I just love how words go together to tell stories. And I've, I just feel like I'm finally leaning into something that I was always good at, but I had so many voices in my head telling me that I wasn't. Something over the last month just clicked. Like the song I wanna start recording today, I wrote two days ago, just two days ago and I've been listening to it non-stop. I've been listening to my own music non-stop. I've been itching to record things, but um, the reason I wasn't was because I was having audio issues where um, with my computer, Logic was just saying, no, 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 you cannot, you cannot keep messing with these settings. And like, I couldn't record, I couldn't 
every time I changed the, the dials, it, it would mess up the video recording audio and it just, I had reached a point where I could no longer justify keeping music and <laughs> videos on the same computer. And so I took a very scary dive and bought <laughs> a brand new computer that is just for music. So now my workstations are completely separate. I do all social media work, videos and research over here. And then this new setup is all music. And I have not regretted it once since I made that jump. The song I wanna to record today is called The Story I've Waited to Tell. And it's partially inspired by my own life and it's partially inspired by, I started writing it while I was watching uh, the Netflix show Heartstopper because it, it brought up so many, so many emotions in me. It, it hits so deeply close to home. Literally right after I finished watching the show, I marched myself right into here and I did not stop writing until the song was done. I've never written a song where I'm like typing the lyrics before I'm consciously thinking of them. It's like the story was writing itself. I've never had something so automatically come out of me and it just created this beautifully simple song. I had to fight myself not to add a ton of bells and whistles and oh add this swell here or why don't you put no no. <laughs> I think there's like maybe 10 music tracks on it and that's it. And I think that's what makes it so beautiful. And when I wrote this song, I realized that this is why I haven't released my sixth studio album. This is what I'm supposed to say. This is the story I've waited to tell. I'm so excited for these songs and these stories. I've had so much fun writing these lyrics. You know, when I started this career, the concept of releasing music online was brand new. You know, people would look at me like I was crazy because I would focus on YouTube. I would, I would share my music videos and, you know, things that I could film on a budget or, and, and they'd be like, you need to be playing at clubs. You need to go the traditional route. You need to find a label. I just kind of fought back. <laughs> when people tell you you cannot do something because it makes them uncomfortable or they don't understand, when you finally succeed at what you have been pursuing, whatever that is, it's important to remember that you didn't get there because people told you you couldn't. You got there because you were capable of getting there the entire time. This industry is built on this sort of idea that you constantly have to prove yourself. People think that your success, your skill level, your whatever is defined by their perception of it. Prove it to me is sort of the attitude, but you don't need to prove it to anyone. You've just always been capable of it. The only need person you needed to prove it to was yourself, um, which sounds so incredibly stereotypical and like cliche, but it's true. That was one of the biggest lessons I had to learn. The most beautiful thing about this music that I'm writing is for the very first time since I was probably 13, 14, just writing lyrics and melodies in my room, I don't have anyone else's thoughts in my head when I'm writing. I can just hear me. I relied on music as a way of just wanting to be heard. I wrote songs thinking it would change the minds of people around me. I felt like I had something to prove. I don't need to go back in history and negate the feelings I had when I was 17, 16, whatever. I did the best I could with the tools I had at the time, you know? Writing without any of those people in my brain and having all of those demons quieted has just been so peaceful. 15 years ago, I came out 
and I was kind of forced out of the closet. But I do feel like I've sort of finally wrapped up that very important and intrinsic chapter to who I am as a person. I've tied it up with a nice little bow and I feel very happy about that. Um, Cause that was an experience that defined me for half of my life. And in some ways, maybe it always will because I've, I've, I've learned to recognize how beautifully heartbreaking and exciting that is as a gay person and how truthful and valid it is to my experiences as a gay person. There's been a lot of full circle moments in my life this year and it just feels so good. So I hope that comes across in the music. Yeah, I'm so excited. I still remember the moment I fell out there on the stairs in your apartment smell.